Hello, people of God. How are you? It is Lakedra again. Happy Sunday to everyone, wherever you are, or if this may be any other time. God bless you and thank you so much for joining with us. I want to bring another word of encouragement and pray with each and every one. Those of you that are believing God for restoration in your marriage, your family to come back to the Lord your spouse, whatever the case may be, I want you to know that Jesus has already paid the price. It is his will that your family be whole and healed. It was by his stripes he paid the price so that we, we that have gone astray, those that are lost, families that may be broken, hearts that may have come up under the, the power of the enemy, the sins of the world. He came to deliver all. For the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 5. That he was wounded for our transgressions. And bruised. For our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace. That peace. In every area of our life. That he was chastised for. Was for us. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And so this is what the enemy don't want you to know. Those of you that are, are filled with fear and you're worried and you, you are struggling with believing how God can turn things around for you. But the good news is. He has already turned it around. So now it's time to take a hold of this truth. Take a hold of this truth and the revelation of what God has already done for you over 2,000 years ago. This is what you call warfare. And it is God's will for oneness and unity and a husband and a wife to be like-minded towards one another out of reverence. For Christ Jesus. It is God's will for a husband and a wife. To both to both be followers. Of Christ. In his image and likeness. Their marriage in his image and likeness. Illustrating the way Christ and the church are united into one. And so we're going to get into it people of God. As the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 15. Verses 5 through 7. Paul said this here. And he's saying it to each and every one now. He says, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement. Give you the same attitude of mind toward each other. That Christ Jesus had. So that with one mind and one voice. You may glorify the God and Father. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. And accept one another. Then just as Christ accepted you. In order. To bring praise. To God. And so here Paul. Is revealing the power of God. How he not only. Gives endurance. And strength. And encourages our hearts. But he also causes us to have the mind of Christ. And causes us to have the same attitude toward each other. So that we can have with one mind and one voice. This unity that glorifies God. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And receive one another. Just as Christ has accepted us, meaning loving each other, laying down our life for one another. This is the power of God. It is him who grants it. God is talking about a marriage. He's talking about households. He's talking about the body of Christ, how he grants this unity to, how he puts this oneness of heart and how he causes this grace of peace to enter into a relationship. We can see that this comes only through God. 
who causes us to be as Christ, who is our peace, for he is the Prince of Peace. So if your spouse is away from God right now, it is God who will give them this mind of Christ Jesus, causing them to receive you, love on you, accept you just as Christ received us. It is Christ's blood that paid the price for these things to happen. God is the one to restore our minds back to God. Without having the mind of Christ in the homes, in lives, in families, in marriages, there will be discord. There will be division. There will be separation and divorce. Jesus said that it, it happens because of the hardness of our heart. But remember, God is the one who softens the heart by opening up the eyes of our understanding. Giving us the Holy Spirit who empowers our minds and renews it to the will of God. And so it doesn't matter what you are going through right now, people of God. It doesn't even matter if your spouse has gone on with their lives and started a whole nother family. The power of God supersedes it all. He knows how to reach your spouse in their dead works. He knows how to reach them, even though their hearts may be hardened. He can reach them in many ways. He has many avenues, many channels. He can visit them and touch their hearts and their minds and bring to them the truth of his will and cause his will to be done in your life. We can see it back in Malachi and I want us to go back there. In Malachi chapter 2 verses 13 through 16 just to show you the power of God. How it is him that brings unity. It's him that restores marriages and relationships. And bring our minds under the obedience of Christ. The obedience of God and, in, and into his perfect will. Otherwise men's eyes and women's eyes will remain closed. And their hearts will remain hardened. But God has a way of leading us out. Of our bondages and setting us free. Here back in Malachi. These men had went on with their lives. Started new families. Walked away from their spouses. And God sent the prophet Malachi. To convict their hearts. And bring them back to his perfect will. He restored their relationships back with their spouse. They couldn't deny. They couldn't deny and reject God. Because when God visits someone, he brings rewards and light. There's no way you can encounter God and remain the same. God is the God of power and restoration and healing. Hallelujah. Here back in Malachi, it shows us clearly how these men's prayers had been rejected by God. They felt the heavy weight of it. They felt the bondage in their lives. They saw that nothing was working in their lives. They didn't see the blessings anymore. And so here in Malachi chapter 2 verses 13 through 16. And I want us to really just go back. Go back in it and see and hear just how God feels about your marriage. As we can see how the prophet Malachi, who was sent by God, spoke to them on God's behalf concerning these men and their marriages and the covenant that they were breaking and how God feels about covenant. And vows. And marriages. Many have heard. These verses before. But it is so good to go back and hear. It's always good. To hear and let the Holy Spirit. Bring more revelation. So you can get. The whole message. And see the heart of God. Of what he is saying. And speaking. Concerning your marriage. To give you hope. And to allow you, allow you to see that God is concerned 
very much concerned about your marriage. It is his design. It is what he has created. And so you are not alone, people of God. Hallelujah. The prophet Malachi said this to them. Another thing you do. You flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accept them with pleasure from your hands. And you ask why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. So here God is witnessing what's going on in our marriages. He is witnessing our faithfulness that we have to our vows. God witnesses the covenant that we have with one another. He watches over it, for we serve the God of covenant. Remember, he designed marriage. He is the God of covenant and he doesn't break it and he expects us not to break our covenant and our vows. And so here he says, God is not even paying attention to your prayers, your offerings, your sacrifices, and you're wondering why. And he exposed the sin. He exposed the covenant that they had broken. And then he says, has not the God, the one God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring, meaning children, meaning a family who will be brought up in the things of God, in a loving home, a godly environment. Seeing their mother and their father. Children seeing their mother and father represent Christ. With unity. And honor and love and respect. Which is the will of God. It is the nature of God. It is the character traits. The character traits of God. Not to divorce and walk away and reject your wife. Or a wife reject her husband. And so here the prophet. Allow them to see this ungodly lifestyle, this ungodly behavior will bring discouragement and confusion in the lives of your children. This will be their example. This is what will cause them to live this kind of life. And so he shows them how clearly when a husband loves his wife, and remains faithful to her. This shows godly character. In the eyes of his children. It represents God. And so he says. So be on your guard. And do not be unfaithful to your wife. The wife of your youth. The one you, you married. The one who you made a vow. To be with to death do you part. He's saying, this is, this is what will cause your children to rebel against me. By them seeing the way you behave. God got on them. And so it goes on and he says, the man who hates and divorces his wife. And this is the NIV version. He says, the man who hates and divorces his wife says, the Lord. This was God saying this through the prophet. The God of Israel. He says, when a man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord of God of Israel, does violence to the one he should protect, says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. And I can tell you, people of God, that when those men heard this, it restored them back to their wives. It convicted their hearts. They were men that were crying out, wondering what was wrong. God opened up their eyes. God opened up their ears. God showed them the path that lead to blessings and salvation in their homes and protection over their children. God was showing them that going in this other direction is going to lead to destruction. 
It is not my will. It's going to affect your lives for generations. Loving your wives, protecting your wives is what will bring the blessings. Wives being committed to their husbands is what will bring the blessings. Not only to their lives, but their children's lives. It can guide them and show them the path of righteousness. So here are these men's lives were a life that was separated from God because of them breaking that covenant. But God brought restoration and healing and deliverance and clarity and guidance because, because he is the God of restoration. And so this goes back to what Paul the Apostle was talking about. May the God who gives encouragement, endurance, endurance also help you to be like-minded, help you all to come in agreement, help you all to do what is right, help you all be followers of Christ Jesus, help you all be on one accord to honor God the Father. And so God is the one that comes in and helps that individual that is bound and filled with darkness and don't, don't know that they have gone astray. God reaches them. This is why people of God, you have to know the God that you serve. Know his ways. See how much he cares about you and cares about your marriage and, and cares about a wayward spouse that may have made the wrong choices that they had no idea about. Whose heart, whose hearts was hardened. God has a way of reaching them as you remain faithful and, and, and rely upon him to do it. Because remember, we serve the God of restoration. We serve the God of healing and we serve the God that shed his blood so that none would perish but have everlasting life. And we perish when we don't obey God. We perish when we don't believe his word. We perish. When we reject, when we reject the life he has given us. And so God comes after the lost sheep. He comes after those that are lost and have gone astray. This is why marriages are being healed and delivered. This is why wayward spouses are able to come back to God. This is even how the Jews and the Gentiles became one as the body of Christ. It was because Christ is our peace. Remember he was he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, meaning all sin. All sin and all sin and trespasses of our ancestors. The Bible says that he was chastised for the for the peace of us. It was the chastisement of our peace that was upon him. He was chastised and, and beaten and whipped for us. And by those stripes, we are healed. He shed his blood so that we can have peace. He shed his blood so that we can receive the Holy Spirit and be transformed. Be transformed in the image and the likeness of him. With his spirit at work on the inside of us. Who teaches us and leads us into all truth. And even sends someone in our life to help us. Hallelujah. He comes even in dreams and visions. God has so many ways of reaching us and convicting us and restoring the years the locusts and the canker worms and the caterpillars has eaten. And so Paul, who was speaking again in the churches in Ephesus, he talked about how the blood brought unity and oneness. And you know, Paul, who hated the church, who was persecuting the Christians, killing them, having them put in jail. If anybody knew this, it was Paul who knew it. He saw how the power of God softened his heart, how God came to him when he was on the road of Damascus. Was delivered. His eyes was open. God encountered him. And when he was down on that ground, hearing the voice of God, 
he got up a new man. He got up with a soft heart, a renewed mind. He was put back on the right path. God delivered him from the path that was leading him to destruction, causing trouble and chaos in, in the people of God's lives. They had no peace because of Paul. Saul of Tarsus was his name. God changed his name, changed his image and his likeness into the likeness and the image of God. God delivered him and set him free and put his spirit on the inside of him and caused him to walk in his ways. And he became one of the greatest apostles that ever lived who wrote the majority of the New Testament. Here, this was a man that hated to hear the name of Jesus. In the end, was willing to die for him. He had a choice to live, but he chose to die for the Lord. He wanted to. He loved him. He was, he was just so enriched in him. He was so grateful how he had saved his life. And he wanted to serve him for the rest of his life. Even unto death. Even unto death. Just to preach the good news. He didn't care if it cost him. His life. He wanted everyone to know about the good news of what Jesus had done. He was a witness of it. And so here back in Ephesus, chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, he said this. Yes, at one time you were far away from God. But now in Christ Jesus, you are brought near to him. You are brought near to God through the blood sacrifice of Christ. Christ is the reason we are now at peace. He made us Jews. And you who are not Jews, one people. And we are separated. And we were separated by a wall of hate that stood between us. But Christ broke down that wall. And this is what God is doing in the lives of husbands and wives. It doesn't matter how far they are gone astray. What kind of division there may be. What divorce has happened. God is saying that the blood of Jesus was shed to soften the hearts. Renew the minds. Put the love of Christ Jesus there. And break down that wall of division. That had us filled with hatred against one another. Paul received this transformation. People of God. He was a man. Not only a Jewish man. That came to know Christ. But he began to receive the Gentiles. God, God softened the Jews hearts. To where they was able to even receive the Gentile church. The disciples, the apostles at one time, they had nothing to do with the, the Gentiles. The Jews didn't want no part of them. God brought that unity of love and peace. And he's the same God that we see brought healing and restoration back in Malachi. Between men who had left their wives, who were faithful unto them. I'm sure those women had been crying out. They were hurting. They were in desperation. Just like all of us had to experience. Many are, are, are just wondering, Lord, where are you? Where are you, Lord? But I'm telling you, it's about having faith in the blood of Jesus. God is the God of peace. He can bring that wayward spouse of yours out. Hallelujah. But you must believe upon his blood. You must believe upon the God who is peace. You must believe what he has already done for you. And begin to declare that your spouse is coming back to God. Jesus has paid the price for you to be reconciled back to one another. Having the same mind. Speaking with one voice. Giving praise unto God. Having a renewed heart and a right spirit. You have to know that the power and the blood of Jesus. Has brought this transformation. Breaking down the walls of hostility and enmity. Can bring a husband back. Who has divorced his wife. And can bring a wife back. Who has divorced her husband. And went on with their lives. God can take that stony stubborn heart out. And give them a tender heart. Don't give up on God people of God. Don't allow your heart to become bitter. Looking at what's going on in the natural. Keep looking at the love of Christ Jesus. Keep realizing. That is the blindness. That separates you. When blindness come in. That's what separates 
and comes to destroy and comes to destroy the will of God. It's through Satan. He is the God of this world, the God of darkness. He is the accuser of the brethren. He comes to bring division. He is the one that divided Adam and Eve from God through his lies. Through his lies, he still that same serpent to turn husbands against their wives, to come against the will of God for their marriages, to come against that illustration of the way Christ and the church are united into one flesh. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil when he was manifested in the flesh and hung up on that cross and shed his perfect unspotted blood for us and rose from the dead, proving to us that he is greater than death, hell, and the grave, proving to us that he's greater than Satan, proving to us that he stripped him from his weapons and his power that he had over our minds. Hallelujah. And so here Paul is our example. We can see the power of reconciliation and love of Christ Jesus through this man who once hated his neighbors, who once hated the people of God, who didn't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. And so if you have a spouse that doesn't want to have anything to do with Jesus and you have witnessing and you have witnessed them saying they don't, they don't want this Jesus. Count it all joy, people of God. The blood was shed for them. Hallelujah. For the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 through 23. For God in all his fullness was pleased. He was pleased to live in Christ, it says. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace. Oh, hallelujah. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth. How? By means of Christ's blood on the cross. So here, this is, this is the Father's plan. We can see it was him that sent his son to restore everything back to himself. By dying. So that we can have life. So, so that we would not be dead and remain dead in our sins. In the dark dungeons and prisons of Satan. Under his guard. Christ came to free us from the prisons of darkness. From the prisons of Satan. By breaking the power of deception off of our minds. Sending his word to deliver us and heal us from all destruction. And so the Bible says it was by Christ's blood on the cross he delivered us. And then Paul goes on and says this. He says this. This includes you. Who were once far away from God. You were his enemies. Separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. And yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ. In his physical body. And as a result. He has brought you into his own presence. And this is what happened with, with Paul. When the presence of the Lord showed up. He heard the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. My God. His life was changed. And so. Trust God is in, encountering your spouse. His presence. Hallelujah. Will encounter them. They may be one way now. But they're going to come out another way. In the mighty name of Jesus, with a new heart and a right spirit. Trust in the blood of Jesus, people of God. And so here Paul says, as a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless. As you stand before him without a single fault. Look at the grace of God. Look at the mercy of God. He says, but you must continue to believe this truth. Meaning what Christ done for you. And stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. That's the good news. How Jesus saved us and restored us. Broke the power of the devil off of our minds. Purged our dead conscience. That was filled with, with wickedness and enmity against God. That didn't want God. We couldn't, we couldn't have come to God and come to repentance, people of God, if it wasn't for what Jesus done for us. Our hearts was unable to want life. We didn't even know we were dead in our sins. We enjoyed sinning. 
It was our nature. Now you look over your life, those that are in Christ, we hate sin. We don't want the things of this world anymore. We can see the darkness and the filth of it. We don't want it nowhere around us. Anybody that has been transforming, has a heart that has been converted, has been filled with the Holy Spirit. We have the mind of Christ. We don't want the things of this world. We can see it as being evil. We love the things of God. The things we once hated, we now love. And the things we once loved, we now hate. We have been born again. Jesus paid the price. And so as you trust in the blood of Jesus, of what he done for you, you can now trust him to do it for your spouse. The encounters you are having in his presence should be enough for you to trust and rejoice that your spouse will encounter, will encounter these same experiences and joy of their salvation by Christ Jesus by Christ Jesus, that they will no longer be the same. You have to have such faith in God till you can just see it and claim it for them and say to the devil, your time is short, devil. Your time is up. It's over for you. The blood of Jesus was shed for my spouse or the blood of Jesus was shed for my son or my daughter. Whatever loved ones you are standing in the gap for, be that priest where you can apply the blood and just be patient and be encouraged. Be encouraged and just know that it's only a matter of time before their eyes will be open because that's what the blood does. It has come to open up the eyes of the blind. Set the captives free. And it is done through you and I. Who are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul says. This good news has been preached all over the world. And I Paul. Have been appointed. As God's servant. To proclaim it. Hallelujah. And that's what you ought to be doing. People of God. Proclaiming the good news. What Christ has done. And not only seeing him as doing it for you. But see him as doing it for your family. Your household. Your children. So when you look at them you can smile. You can just smile. You can just smile right now. And be happy for them. Regardless of what you are seeing in the natural. You can just, just look over, over your spouse's life. And just smile. And just say Lord I thank you for what you have done for my spouse. They are free and don't even realize it. But they will realize it, Father, because your blood, your blood was shed for them and your word will not return back. Lord, you have broken the power of darkness off of them and their eyes will be open to this truth. You see, when you have faith in God and his blood, you can stand against the devil and rebuke him. Why? Because you see God greater than him. You see God's blood greater than him. You see God's will greater than him. And you can see that nothing is too hard for God when you have faith in him. The word shows you how great God is. And so it's time that you hold on to it. Don't forget the good news. Don't drift away from it. Keep reminding yourself about the blood. Even when things look like it has gotten worse, just continue going back to the blood. Just continue going back to what Christ has done. And the power of the blood, how it washes and renews the minds, how it, it transforms hearts, how it breaks chains, how it has been shed that your loved ones receive life. Because life is in the blood. A life was given for a life. And that life defeated death, hell, and the grave. That means your spouse or your loved ones now are free to come out of darkness. As the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ. Who through eternal spirit. Who through the eternal spirit offered himself. Without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works. To serve the living God. And so here Paul is saying. Or the Hebrew writer is saying. The power of the blood is so powerful. It washes the minds. That was dead. It renews people on the inside. It causes them to come from death to life. 
It destroys darkness. Darkness cannot stay where the blood is because the blood represents life. Death cannot stay where the blood of Christ is because the blood is life. The blood is powerful than death. It is what gives life. And so when you speak the blood of Jesus over your spouse, you have just canceled death. For instance, if you go back to Exodus chapter 4, verse 24 and 25, where Moses' wife, Zipporah, applied the blood on her husband Moses, and he was able to live. A death angel through the Lord had come to kill him. Some translation said that it was his son that would have been killed. So we don't really know exactly where death was headed. But we know that the Bible said that the Lord had Moses to live when the blood was applied by his wife. I want us to look at it. It says, and it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him. Talking about Moses. And sought to kill him. Then Zipporah. Took a sharp stone. And cut off the foreskin of her son. And cast it at his feet. Meaning Moses feet. And said surely. A bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said. A bloody husband thou art. Because of the circumcision. So we can see that when circumcision took place. Upon Zipporah's and Moses' son. The blood that came from the circumcision. And the foreskin of it. That was thrown at Moses' feet. And when Zipporah his wife declared. He was a bloody husband. The Bible said that God let him live. The blood stopped death. And so when you apply the blood over your loved one, over your spouse, you have just canceled death. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, people of God, the blood is powerful. But you must believe upon this sacrificial blood, this spotless blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You'll see the same results in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is written. Hallelujah. But your faith has to be in it. Your faith has to know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it will be as you have spoken it. It will be as you have spoken it, people of God. Hallelujah. It will be what you have declared. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let all hell hear you. And don't get weary and well-doing, people of God. You will reap if you faint not. The Holy Spirit will help you. Because wherever the blood is, and the word, the spirit of the Lord is there also. And the Bible tells us, oh, hallelujah. What Paul shows us clearly in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, when he was speaking to the churches in Ephesus. He says, you used to live in sin. Just like the rest of the world obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. So if you have a spouse who refuse to obey God, just know that the blood of Jesus was shed just for that rebellion, that iniquity, that transgression. The chastisement of the Lord was for our peace. The chastisement of the Lord was for our peace, meaning our reconciliation back to God. And by his stripes, we were healed in our minds, our soul, our bodies, our spirit. We were raised up from the dead. The power of the blood was shed to come against the unfruitful works of darkness. And that spirit of rebellion, that spirit of Satan that comes to blind the mind cannot stop the blood of Jesus. Because the blood declares mercy. The blood is saying, let them go. The blood is saying, 
Take away the blinders. The blood is saying, take away the grave clothing. The blood is saying, cleanse them from all sin. Therefore, Satan has nothing against us. He has to let them go. He has to let you go. And so this is what Paul is talking about. This is what Paul is talking about. Jesus came to stop this spirit of rebellion and darkness. The spirit of rebellion and darkness that works in the hearts and the minds. But God came to deliver us from it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We didn't know. And so in 2 Corinthians, just, this is what Paul says in chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. He says, if the good news we preach is hidden. Behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. And so here we can see Paul is saying, this is what the enemy is, is after. He's after anyone so that they don't know about the good news. His job is to blind their minds because you see, it's, it's knowing about this truth sets us free. It's about sin and understanding what happened. The good news exposes his lies. The good news also shows a man that he was created to love his wife. As Christ loves the church, the good news shows a wife how she was created to be submissive to her husband, honor her husband as the church is unto the Lord. The beauty that they have been given to be like Christ, to be like God. The enemy doesn't want us to look in the mirror, which is the word. He doesn't want us to know who we are. So he blinds the mind about the goodness of who God has created us to be through the blood of Jesus. But you go to war against him by making him and commanding him to lead them that they are free through the blood of Jesus. Keep reminding darkness about the blood of Jesus that it bows. You are a witness of the truth. And therefore, because you can testify about the blood. Hallelujah. You have overcame the devil. You have overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Meaning because you know the truth. You know the truth of what Christ has done for you. You know the truth of what Christ has done for your family, your children. The devil has to let him go. That's how we overcome the devil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so... Keep standing on the blood, people of God. That's why and that's how your loved ones are coming out. The Bible shows us here. Christ came to redeem us from that curse of blindness and wrongdoings. It tells us this in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, that Christ redeemed us from the curse, the curse of bondage. The curse of having a dysfunctional home and marriage. The curse of deafness of ears. The curse of sickness and poverty. The curse of division, hatred, you name it. Everything the flesh produces, Christ has redeemed us from it all. It is the flesh that destroys marriages and households. It, it, it is the flesh that causes us to be away from God because the flesh is an enemy of God. It hates the things of God. But Jesus came in the form of flesh and nailed himself to the cross. Hallelujah. He had men to take him and hang him up high. And he shed his blood, washing away our sins. And he died and rose from the dead and delivered us and transformed us by the renewing of our minds and gave us a new heart and a right spirit. As you continue declaring this over your spouse, declaring that that's what God has also done for them, taking a hold of it, seeing it has already done, 
that spouse of yours will come out because of you, people of God. Those of you that have faith, walking by faith and not by sight, knowing the truth. It is the truth that sets the captives free. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 7. God said this here through the prophet Isaiah and what he would do. It says, you will open the eyes of the blind. You will free captives from prison. Releasing those who sit in dark dungeons. Hallelujah. And that's what Christ has done when he died up on the cross for you and I. And now the veil can be taken away through the power of the Holy Spirit. That veil that keeps people in darkness and in bondage and blinded to the truth. Back in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20, it says, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. This means your spouse, people of God. This is why you are in Christ. You are going to bring your spouse back to God. You are going to be the one to bring your children back to God. Your loved ones. Hallelujah. Those that God has put in your life. The Bible said, for God was in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting people's sins against them. And then Paul goes on and he says this. And he gave us his wonderful message. He gave us his wonderful message of reconciliation. For it says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. And we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. And remember, we plead the blood of Jesus, reconciling them back to Christ. We are priests, people of God, who please by faith the blood over the lives of our spouses and loved ones who are away from God. And it is through faith we have in his blood when we are in prayer so that the spirit of Christ will bring them out of the deception of the devil and, and bring them into the presence of God because the blood causes us to be able to come boldly before the throne of grace. And so the blood is what's, what's going to allow your spouse to come in the presence of God. The blood is what brings them to God. They can come in his presence. They can hear his voice. They can receive his goodness and mercy in times of these troubles. Hallelujah. And so, when they are brought in the presence of God, as a result of that, the power of the devil's control will be broken in the realm of the spirit in their minds and off of their eyes and, and reconciliation can manifest. You can see it. You will see the union come back. You will see the restoration come back because of the love of Christ will be shared abroad in their hearts. And marriages can be healed and households and families can come together. Having the like-mindedness of Christ. Being like-minded towards one another. Receiving one another as Christ received us. Stand on the blood of Jesus, people of God. That's what brings reconciliation. If you're coming and believing God for your marriage to be healed and delivered, God is calling for salvation. It's not just about you and your spouse restored back to one another. God is calling for holiness and righteousness and a life that illustrates the way Christ and the church are one. He came to restore and bring God's plans and purpose back into our lives. For by his stripes, remember, we were healed and grafted in the kingdom and came to be members of his body. Which is why a man is joined to his wife as Christ and the church are one flesh. This all 
came as a result of his blood that a man can love his wife as Christ loves the church and the wife can receive and, and be submitted to a husband. They submitted themselves to one another now because of reverence for Christ, because of the love for Christ they have and their obedience unto him all through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the change takes place from the inside out. You have to believe in the power and the resurrection. Life God gives. This same power that raised Christ from the dead is what's quickening and what will quicken your spouse, your loved one's life. And through that resurrection power, it puts to death. It puts to death all hostility and enmity and sin. Hallelujah. It removes that hostility and that wicked nature. We're talking about the power of God. When God came to save, he didn't come to do anything halfway. He said, upon that cross, it is finished. It is finished. He came to make everything back complete and restored back to God's original intent. And as time go on, we become more and more like him. And this is what the devil is afraid of. This is what the devil is, is terrified about. You believing in the blood of Jesus that paid the price. And so we are members of his body. As the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 30 through 33. That we are members of his body. And as the scriptures say. A man. Leads his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. You see, it's because the spirit of the Lord is in that couple. And now they are acting like Christ. They are members and joined to him. And now they are nature. Now their nature has become like his. All this was part of God's plan. This was his promise of what he would do in the earth through the blood of Jesus. He, he shows us him restoring things back from the curse. Because back in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 54 and 50, 56, we can see that this was a part of the curse where a man would not have no compassion for his wife. Instead of him loving his wife. Up under the curse, it works in reverse. He will hate her. And he will leave his children. And he will leave the brethren. He will leave the people of God. He will be against the things of God. And we see it also in verse 56. It talks about the woman will be the same way. She will go from loving her husband, being up under this curse, to hating him. Dishonoring him, leaving him, having no compassion for her children either. So we can see this, this home breaking up as a result of the curse because the devil has come in, blinding the minds, causing men to go astray, getting away from the will of God and his commands. Everything just all messed up. We can see that this is what happened in Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting from verse 15, all the way through the end of that chapter. A list of the curse. How everything would just be stripped away. Everything was stripped away as a result of sin and the curse. But Christ came to redeem us from it all. Restoring a man back to his wife. Restoring the home back. According to the will of God. Bringing peace between the body of Christ. Doing everything God had planned from the beginning. Jesus had to pay the price for those things to be brought back. To God's original intent. Because Adam and Eve. Because of Adam and Eve's rebellion. And sin. It stopped the plan of God from happening in our life. But Jesus came and took over. That sin and paid the price for it all to come back to God. 
Oh, for, for every life to come back to God and be transformed again so the devil didn't win, people of God. There is hope for your marriage. You have to know that the blood set you free. The blood has redeemed you from what you are seeing happening in your home, in your life, and in your family. It, it never was the will of God, Jesus said. Divorce never was God's plan. He said it happened as a result of our own hearts becoming cold and becoming blinded. Is what he's talking about. But Jesus' blood came to purge our minds and cleanse it from a dead conscience and a mind of sin and turn it back into having the mind of Christ, the mind of God. It was a fight. There was a war over our lives to be restored. Hallelujah. So the devil has no right to come in and separate what God has joined together and what God has restored. You have to stand your ground, people of God. If you know this truth, it's this truth that will set you free. You can't be blind to the benefits of Christ you have been given. You cannot not know what's yours. When the African Americans was free, it was for many years they didn't know they were free. And as a result, they stayed living as slaves, not knowing they were free. Go back and look at the history where it's the same thing that the devil is doing to so many right now. They are free and they don't even know it. The devil show not going to tell you. The world won't tell you. You have to get a hold of the good news. And this is what happened when the slaves were free. They got a hold of the good news. You see, they couldn't read. They couldn't understand. But there was news given up to them. And when they found out that they were free, when they found out how the North had won the battle against the South here in America, oh my God, they walked out proud. And yes, the enemy was mad. Many had lost their lives. For the slaves to be free. And this is what Christ is showing us about his blood. Concerning us against the devil. Who had us bound and blind to the truth. We didn't know that we were slaves in our sin and dead. And the devil don't want you to know that your marriage has been redeemed and restored. And your spouse can come out. Their eyes can be opened. Jesus promised these things through the prophets. The father promised these things through the prophets before he even came of what he would do. And it happened. Hallelujah. It happened. And so here Paul is showing us a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery meaning about marriages. What they represent, he says, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. And so no wonder why the devil is, is breaking up marriages. He knows that if that marriage is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are united into one, that marriage is just like Christ and the church. That marriage is powerful. That marriage is going to do the will of God. That marriage is plugged in. To the plans and the purposes of heaven here on this earth. And so the enemy says, I got to bring in adultery. I got to bring in lust. I got to come and deceive the minds. I have to come in and bring discord. I have to keep the hearts from being soft. I have to come in and seduce. I have to come in and do everything there is to pull them away from this blessing. He do not want you to know, people of God, what you have been given. But you stand your ground, having done all to stand. Hallelujah. And so Paul says, it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say each man must love his wife, meaning anyone that's in Christ. You'll know it because he'll be loving his wife, anyone that has the spirit of the Lord. We'll go from faith 
to faith, to glory, to glory, becoming more and more in the image and the likeness of Christ. He will be a man that love his wife, not reject his wife, but he will protect his wife. He will love his wife. He will lay down his life for his wife as Christ done for the church. So we can see the devil polluted and perverted the man's mind, causing him to do the opposite. But Christ came to restore, restore it back where a man can love his wife as himself, meaning as his own body. Just like Christ loves the church and the wife must respect her husband. What she would if she knew the truth, even if she don't see him obeying the good news. She would trust and believe on his behalf. You see, if she's a woman of faith and believe in the power of the blood, she knows that it is just a matter of time before that marriage, before that marriage be exactly what God says. She'll wait on that promise, that prophetic word, that prophetic word. She'll hold on to it and never let it go when her eyes is open to the truth. So believe that Christ's blood has paid the price, bringing peace, removing the blindness of all hostility against God's will, people of God. Against God's will who hates divorce and separation. And begin declaring what Christ's blood is doing in your marriage, your household, your family, in the lives of your loved ones, your children. And that you and your spouse are joining together, healed through the blood of Jesus. Because the blood paid the price. You have a right, hallelujah. You are priests and kings unto God. And a king has authority. He lives a life of blessings and, and royalty. Nothing is lacking. We are kings and priests unto the Lord. We are made in his image and likeness. He is our high priest. Hallelujah. Who interceded on our behalf by shedding his blood. We are called to do the same. Meaning we plead and apply the blood. We anoint our lives and our families. By speaking the blood of Jesus over it. And so a king has authority to do these things. In the kingdom of God. And priests, we reconcile unbelievers back to God. Remember, we have this same ministry of Christ. Of reconciling people back to him. Through presenting the blood for their sins unto God. Speaking how Christ has, has redeemed them from the sins of bondage. You know, the more you begin to just speak this over your spouse's life. You are operating as a priest. He's the mediator between God and man. Like Christ is our high priest, who is our mediator. And so God hears the prayers of the righteous. He hears the priest on the behalf of the people. Praise the Lord. This is why Moses and Aaron were serving God. They were interceding on the behalf of the people of Israel. My God, hallelujah. They were making way so that the people can enter into the blessings and the promises of God. And so you are making a way for your spouse to come unto God. When you plead the blood. When you show forth the life of Christ. When you stand your ground having faith. Having faith in God. Because faith is the substance. We're going to need for the things that we are hoping for. It is the evidence of the things that are not seen. Faith is the substance. For the things we are hoping for. And the evidence of the things that are not seen. And so it's going to take having faith in God. Nothing will be impossible. Nothing will be impossible to those that believe. To anyone that believes upon him. And so the Bible tells us. Back in Revelation chapter 5 verses 9 and 10. Of what John the apostle saw. When God our Lord Jesus Christ showed him the revelations. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. John said and they sang a new song. With these words. This, this was the revelation he saw. 
He heard them saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seal and open it. For you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God, and they will reign on the earth. Meaning, rule. Have dominion, have power, subdue, replenish the earth. Go to war, have authority over all the powers of the devil. Treading on serpents and scorpions, meaning treading upon sin and wickedness and darkness. And over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means harm us. You people of God have this, this ministry. Of authority and reconciliation. That are ambassadors of Christ. Your spouse and your family. Will come out because of you. Because of you pleading the blood. Trusting in the blood. Trusting in the work of Calvary. This should be what bring you joy. You didn't have to shed your blood. The blood was already shed. You didn't have to suffer and die. You didn't have to suffer and die and take and take their place on the cross. Jesus done it already. All you do is believe it. And speak it. He made it so easy. He took upon him the punishment for us all. All we do now is believe. My God. He done all the work. God says we are intercessors. We are priests. We are kings. We are leaders in the earth. We bring restoration and reconciliation. By standing on the truth. Proclaiming it. Like Paul says. And don't drift away from it. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Get your eyes off of the blood. And drift away from it. And, and look at things in the natural. And see all the things that is going on in your life. As greater than God. Because he wants to keep fear and anxiety. He wants to steal your joy so that you don't have any peace. This is what he wants. But he can't do that to those whose eyes are open. To those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And know what the spirit of the Lord is saying. We can rejoice in the blood bought promises of God. Over our families. And so we can say to the devil you are already defeated. Get behind us. You have been defeated. The blood has defeated you. We are redeemed. Get ready people of God. I'm telling you. Your marriage is already healed and restored. Just believe it. Stand on the promises of God. The eyes of your spouse's understanding will be enlightened. Their eyes will be opened. It is written. All it takes is the priest to declare it. All it takes is the priest to declare it and the king to decree it, saying what's happening, saying what shall be. Stand your ground, hallelujah, and re remember what Jesus says. Whatsoever you said, you will have. See, because he has made us kings and priests. We can stand in the presence of the Lord. We can stand in his presence. We can come before the throne boldly with grace and receive mercy. And we can ask of anything in time of need and trouble. We are in the image and the likeness of Christ. We are his children. God says, come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Meaning, I will give you everything you are needing. It has been given through the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid the price. Marriages are being healed in the name of Jesus. And are manifesting in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your blood. As your word says, a man shall leave father and mother. And be joined to his wife and the two are united into one flesh. They are being united. Oh, because you are renewing the minds. You are the God that gives. This like-mindedness. You are the one who brings forth the mind of Christ because of the blood of Jesus. Eyes are being opened. Thank you, Lord God, for, for convicting hearts. Causing wayward spouses to come back. 
to your original intent, speaking to them, bringing Lord God reconciliation. We declare it and decree it. Thank you for opening up their eyes, opening up their ears. Thank you for the power of the blood that is breaking darkness and deception's power off of their minds. We declare it now. We bind and rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. We command you to flee. Your power is broken. These marriages are covered under the blood and they shall illustrate the way Christ and the church are united into one flesh. We bind you and break your power through the blood of Jesus. It is written. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You didn't spare your only begotten son for us, but gave him up for us all so that our lives can be healed. Our lives can be blessed and redeemed. All can go back to your original intent. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise for shedding your blood. Oh God, to bring each and every one out of darkness and to renew our minds, change our hearts, cause everything to be restored and replenished. Just like you spoke in the beginning. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. Thank you for turning things around in the spirit. Spoiling principalities and powers and wicked spirits that are in the unseen realm. Stripping them of their weapons. Causing them to let the captives go. Oh, thank you, Lord, for reaching, for reaching those that were lost. We praise your name and we thank you that spouses are coming home. Marriages are healed. They are delivered and free. And it shall, Lord God, be manifested in the name of Jesus, in the lives of your people, those that trust in your word and in your blood. We call it done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross, breaking the curse off of these marriages and homes and families. It is all because of your blood. In Jesus' name, Father, we praise you. Amen and amen. Trust in people of God. It is done through the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter what it looked like. Stand on the promises of God. The blood was already shed. It is already yours. Take a hold of it. Remember God loves you. God loves you. He loves you so much. He shed his blood. And I love you too. And until next time, remember, you are already blessed. Thank God for your marriage being healed. Bye-bye.